Okay, character creation responsibility slider. Uh, 50 minutes now. No. Uh, let's see if I can do this faster. Um, I'm, I will, in this talk, I'm, I am also going to remind you of some things that you have already heard, because there is so much information in this week, and I think that I find it difficult to sort of remember everything that is said in the lecture, so I, I think that so might, might you. So just the fundamental basics. Role-playing involves taking roles. It involves acting as somebody else than yourself, and others accepting you in the role of somebody else. If I just suddenly start to behave like Bob when we're having lunch, uh, but you guys aren't in on the whole fiction, then it's probably not role-playing, then I'm just pretending. Yeah. And inside this fictional world that we agree upon for the game, uh, the fictional person is called a character. So I am the player, and the character is the fictional person inside the world. Uh, now you've heard the character lecture, and many of you have already done the character writing workshop, but I'll just run through this real fast. A character usually has a past, a present, a social network, and some goals, some things this person is trying to achieve. When you think about yourself, of course, you have some goals for today, maybe for this lecture it's not to fall asleep, and then for this, go this day it's to learn things and have fun, and for the week it's something else, and for your life it's something else. Um, you don't always need all this information in all LARPs for all the characters, it depends on what the LARP is about. Um, some of this information uh, is decided, some of the character information is decided before the game starts. And quite a lot of the information about the characters that people play is not very important, and it can be decided inside the game, you can just make something up. If it's sudden, if someone, somebody asks you, oh, do you have siblings? And then maybe the character, it hasn't been decided, so if it's logical in the world that people have siblings, you might say, yes, I have two brothers. And then maybe the other player asks, well, what are their names? And then you haven't decided that, so then you're just going to have to say, oh, they're Bob and Beb, or something. Yeah. Okay, um, so when, when characters are created for LARPs, uh, I find that quite often they begin either with a story function. When you're making the LARP, you're like, oh, it would be the mayor must have a brother so that somebody can betray him so that it can trigger this interesting event that would be fun in the game. So we have to write the brother for the mayor. That could be a story function idea. Or it can be like a really cool idea. You can be like, oh, it would be very awesome if the Amazons, some of them could also be lawyers training to be ninjas. And then you have to find out like a re logical reason why those characters would be in the game because you think it would maybe be interesting to play and it would create interesting situations. Um, so often you start, you don't sit down and go like background, do do do. You start with some kind of idea and then you run from there. <coughs> so creating characters uh, happens basically in the following way when you're designing a game. You need to determine what, how much pre-decided character information is needed for your game to work. Is it really necessary for your game to work to know what everybody's sister and brothers are called if they are never going to be mentioned, if they're probably never going to be mentioned in the game? No, then you don't need to write that information. Um, and that has to do with everything in the character. Quite often the character can be just like a picture and a poem and, and, or a feeling and a goal and that might also be quite enough for that particular game to work. Um, then determine how much the pre how much information predecided information the player will need to be able to role play the character that's something else maybe it's easier to play a character who knows what their brother is called maybe this is the game uh, where where the theme of family is very strong and even if the families are not in the game maybe you you think that maybe in the game the player will spend some time thinking about the character's family it's not necessary for the game to work to define what the, who, who, who their family members are, but it might make role-playing easier, and that is a very good reason to put that in. Okay, so what kinds of predetermined information can go into character? I would say inspiration to create a person that, that is, feels real and true inside the fiction, facts about the character's life and the situation that they're in, a network of relationship between the characters, if you're playing neighbors, for instance, it might make sense that you have some information about who the, your neighbors are because you have met them before. If you play random people on a bus, you don't need any character network if everybody's traveling alone. And then goals, of course, for the situation and the day and for the character's life, because the goals 
and, their, and the values are what will drive how the characters behave inside the fiction. Okay, so when we say writing a character, what we mean is to determine the information that is necessary for the character's function in the game and for the player's inspiration and to present this information in a way that the players can understand and remember. For a while, uh, it was very fashionable in Nordic LARP to write like 15 pages of text about every character, maybe 30 pages. The longer the character information, the better the LARP, we thought. This was completely useless because it was impossible for the players to find out what was useful. And the creating of the characters can happen through writing or workshops or other methods or in, in combination. And then the question for this slider is, who should be in charge of this? Uh, and the slider, character creation responsibility, goes from organizer to player. Those are the extreme points. Okay, and I'm just going to run through the pros and cons. So, if the organizer is responsible for creating the characters and creates them from beginning to end, it has many, many good sides, strong sides. You can control every aspect of the character's background and goals and network. Uh, this means that you can create conflicts between the characters and they, have, they can have conflicting goals and conflicting values uh, and maybe relationships that include conflicts also. Uh, and also alliances, also positive relationships and also negative relationships. And this can create invisible story driving. So that if the, if the players uh, play according to their character descriptions, it will automatically generate stories without you having to tell them that there is a conflict between them. They will find out as soon as they start playing, they will notice that there is a conflict and that will generate interesting situations. Um, if, the, if the organizer writes all the characters, this enables using the character design for, for special things. For instance, if you want to make a game that can be played over and over and over again, with maybe not very much preparation, then it's useful that the characters are already written and then they can be written by the organizers. So that's practical. Um, also, maybe then it would be useful that all the characters are gender neutral so that it doesn't really matter if the neighbor with, who is a single parent that can be a man or a woman is not important for the game. And that's easier because the next time somebody plays this, maybe, maybe the, the person is of the other gender and then it's just sort of practical. If the player writes the character and spends a long time on that, then that the next player will have to do it again. Um, and then, and also of course then you can, if you have a strong theme in, in the game, like, um, I don't know, loss of loved ones, then you can write into every character that in some way they have lost a loved one. But of course you could also do the same thing, you can tell the players the theme of this, of this game is losing a loved one, so every character will have lost somebody in their life. And then the players get to decide, that's also possible. And then the, the strong alibi. When we role play, um, it is the, the, the character, the fiction, is sort of an excuse that allows us to be, try behaviors and behave in ways that we don't normally do. And I think that that alibi becomes stronger if somebody else has written the character, because you're not responsible, because, because Trina wrote the character, and the, so it's Trina's fault that the character be, is, be, is very evil. It's not my fault at all. So that might help psychologically to do, to do that. The negative side with organizing, organizers taking full responsibility of the characters is this. The players may not feel ownership of the character. They may not feel that they have chosen to play this, this kind of person and they may not be interested in that. And they might think that it's really difficult because, either because it's too close to who, who they are or because it's too far from who they are. There are no guarantees. You might write a really sort of great character with information that you think will generate very interesting stories, but there are no guarantees that the players will understand what you meant or that they will interpret it differently because their life might be quite different and they may think that what you mean is something else or that the characters who are like this or who have this past, they behave in some completely different way. So it's still not foolproof. Uh, you might give too much information uh, and then that doesn't work and it's a lot of work for the organizers, especially if the game is large. If in these small games that we've been playing here, the, then it's, it's, it's much more doable. The other side of this then is often the reverse. If the player is responsible for making the characters, they will feel strong ownership of, of the role and they will be very committed to exploring the role that they have created. Um, it, it, it enables the players to make sure that they can, can get to play the kinds of stories that they are interested uh, in today. 
that will change in their life and in their, in the, from day to day. But right now, I think it would be interesting to play like not a very deep story. I just want adventure, and then maybe you can write a character that will drive you in that direction and make it plausible. Uh, that also get, lets the player decide how much close to home, how much similar to themselves they want to play. Um, and it forces the player to interact. If the players create their own characters, they kind of have to find out things about the world. And maybe if they need relationships, they also will have to find out who the other players are before the game. And this is actually quite useful. Uh, because then they have to start thinking about what the game's world is like and what the game will be like before they get to the, to the game, or before the game starts. The negative sides of this is that if, all, if, the, if the players make this work entirely individually, uh, and not as a part of a controlled process, then th the stories that they make for their characters are not integrated into each other, and they are not integrated into the theme of the story, necessarily. Uh, you have no control over which kinds of stories the interaction between the character makes, uh, sometimes that's interesting. In some LARPs that's very appropriate. Maybe everybody in the, in the game is a stranger to each other. Well, then, then it's fine, right? But for many LARPs uh, that becomes a complication. Um, and the characters might not be playable with others or they might be irrelevant to the theme or situation of the game. This almost never happens, but hypothetically it could. People are very predictable. <laughs> people, people tend to write characters that are like people are. But I mean, I guess you could write like a very shy character who doesn't like to speak to anybody. That's a really bad role-playing character, as Eric has told you. And, and you know that as, like, as a LARP maker, but the player might not know that. And that might put them in a very difficult situation once the game starts. And maybe the alibi is weaker. Maybe they feel like more ashamed of, do, of, of playing if they have created their own character. So I said designable surface before um, in the other talk. So making the characters are a designable surface, and the characters are very important. I mean, role playing is about playing the characters. So designing the characters is a really core element of making a game. Uh, and I think that I've been to many really, really good games where the players uh, have made the characters. But that was often so that the players made the characters together in some kind of process that was, was steered and driven by the organizers. So this is, like almost all the sliders, this one will always probably work best if it's somewhere in the middle. Um, but I mean, generally speaking, I think if the scenario of the LARP, like what the LARP is about, the pony election, if the scenario of the LARP is specifically about relations between the characters, and, or about their, the characters' goals or the characters' personalities, if that is the point of the story, then it's probably better that the organizer takes charge and just controls what those become like. But you can let, some, let the players decide some parts about the characters that are less relevant to, the, to how the game works. And the other way around, if the scenario of the LARP is about a random group of people, or if the design requires characters to be based on something very personal, um, then letting the player, players write is just easier. So for what are you worth, perhaps, perhaps you could have made the characters by saying, um, OK, all players figure out who you have the most prejudice about in society, and then play that character. I mean, that could have been a way of making them. Uh, last slide. You will almost always have to, no matter who, where you put this slider, you will almost always be responsible as the organizer for the following things. You need to tell the players what they need to know about the world and the scenario and the theme because otherwise they can't write the characters if, it, if, it, if they are meant to do that. You will almost always have to create some kind of process for how the players write the characters or learn the characters, and how the players establish the relationships between the characters. So at the beginning of the game, there needs to be some kind of process for how the players find out who all the other players, what they play and what their, the relationship is. And when the players are creating content for the game, like characters, for instance, or relationships, you need to keep an eye out to see if it works. Maybe if they write character descriptions, you, you, you should read them. <laughs> because maybe you have made a mistake when you communicated what the game is about and what you're trying to achieve. Maybe you are making the pony election game, and one of your players come in saying, well, I would like to, to play the astronaut pony 
who is in space. And then, then that's not going to work. So then you are responsible. And it's your fault because, because you've accidentally forgot to communicate wh what the parameters are. So even if the player has responsibility for creating the characters, the organizer always has the overall responsibility for the world. Um, and that is 15 minutes, so now I will quit.